So let's pivot to this last question that I think is really one of the million dollar questions right now that your research you know, on bipartisanship really touches on and really highlights the importance of thinking about, you know, what would you respond to the criticism that folks are getting right now that legislators are only joining the Climate Solutions Caucus to look good or to shore up their base in the upcoming election, whatever that might be? So... Uh, this might sound cynical, but I, I would say, first off, it's, it's good to remember that it's a safe bet that almost anything legislators do, they are hoping to look good while doing it. Um, that is certainly something that is, that is always part of what they're thinking about. Um, and that's okay. Part of the reason we have elected officials is so that they will care about looking good in front of the public. Um, I guess the, certainly the fear here is that simply by joining the caucus that they might view that as sufficient um, to sort of bolster their reputation without necessarily taking any action. And I think to some extent that the, that's a problem that can potentially solve itself down the road, right? When a specific bill is introduced or when sort of, and I think, you know, CCL members in turn can like also sort of lobby the folks who are part of the caucus to put some some pressure on them to actually, you know, put forth a report, put forth a bill, like, like start, um, start acting in ways that show their commitment. I do think once they're in the caucus, they're committing themselves to a couple things. They're committing themselves to the idea this can and should be a bipartisan issue. They're publicly committing themselves to the idea that there is a problem actually with the climate because we need climate solutions. Um, and I think those are both really important and really important cues that can really shape how the public's reacting to this issue. We already know that a majority of people know climate change is real and are concerned about it. And I think the more legislators join the Climate Solutions Caucus, the even, like, even, we're gonna see even larger majorities of the public thinking, hey, we do need solutions here. Um, and I think the more you have people from both sides of the aisle, the more this becomes an issue where it's conceivable that politicians from both parties can focus on it, can prioritize it in their campaigns, in their communications with their voters. Um, so I do think it's moving the ball forward. Even potentially if when they first join, they may not have the clearest intentions on how, what the follow through will look like. And I think that making sure they follow through is also partly up to us, making sure that we're gonna push them to take that next. Um, so I do think it's a concern, but I think it's, I think it's best to treat it as a question, sort of what's going to come next, what are you going to do next? Because you're gonna, we're gonna need people to move in this direction, which means we have to give them the opportunity to change if they're not there already. Absolutely, and I think that ties directly into what our legislative director, Dr. Danny Richter, continues to highlight again and reminding, you know, CCL supporters throughout the country right now that as much as there might be ongoing discussion about, you know, where's the beef? Is this something that actually is leading to action right now? Or is it just a, you know, parade of peacocks, uh, as the critiques have been, um, you know, leveled, that essentially political science research, including Rule, Carmichael, and Jenkins, highlights that these cues from elites, like you've highlighted in your own research too, Dr. Paris, are really one of, if not the most important factor in getting elected officials to change their own positioning on issues as critical as climate change. And I think uh, continuing to kind of emphasize not only that, you know, elites drive cues that then drive policy shift, but also that this caucus is having this culture of expectation. You know, our communications director, Steve Volk, wrote about it that described uh, what Representative Corbello asked Representative Gates uh, prior to joining the caucus. He said that uh, returning to the question of whether there should be some uh, discussion about if you accept that climate change is happening, that humans are primarily responsible, and that you want to work on solutions, then you're in. And I think really highlighting that with the mission of this caucus to educate members of Congress on climate risk is a really critical uh, reminder of why, even if we are still waiting on the first real kind of bill to be introduced, this, this phase of building up that caucus is absolutely critical as well.